Uh, thank you very much, uh, Program Director, and good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, as I've been introduced, uh, my name is Craig Miller, and I'm the CEO of Anglo American Platinum. I'd also like to begin by recognizing the representation on the Department of Minerals, uh, the Department of Labor, members of the Mine Health and Safety Council, members of the South African Council, uh, minerals, sorry, uh, members of the Minerals Council of South Africa, uh, members of organized labor, uh, industry representatives, colleagues of Anglo American Platinum, and other uh, the guests and media, and uh, all protocols observed. Um, as I've been asked today to present is um, our journey to achieving zero harm. And as I begin my presentation, I'd like to start off by firstly acknowledging and paying respects to the individuals who've lost their lives in the mining industry in the last year. One life lost is one too many. Within Anglo-American Platinum, I'd also like, to, also like to pay my respects and deepest condolences to the three members of my team that have lost their lives during 2024. Usman Ndlebe, Sipiso Mukhali, who tragically lost their lives on the 7th of June at Amanda Bolt's Deshaba operation, and Basanda Mangeni, who died last week at Deshaba. These incidents have been tragic for us, especially after having gone two years being fatality free. We keep their families, their friends, and their colleagues of both Basanda, Yuzman, and Sipiso in our thoughts and prayers. This serves to remind us of our necessity to redouble our efforts in addressing safety in all areas for all employees. Today, as we uh, reflect on the tragedy that has taken place, but more importantly, how we continue to work to achieve zero harm in our company and across the industry to protect the lives of the people that work for us. So firstly, I'd like to reiterate that safety is the most important value for us. Within Anglo-American Platinum, everything that we do is informed by our desire to achieve zero harm. This will remain the case even after we become a standalone entity and exit the Anglo-American group. I'd also like to highlight that as we deliver our purpose, which is to reimagine mining to improve people's lives, it has to be through strategy and culture. Our culture in action speaks to the work that we do to enable each and every single one of us to feel and operate at our best, and importantly, be able to go home to our families and friends and communities after each day and after each shift, having had a meaningful contribution at work. Our culture is underpinned by our values. Our values are safety, care and respect, accountability, collaboration, integrity, and innovation. And it's further emboldened by our commitments as an, as an organization and to each other, which is to treat each other with trust and respect, to listen, with all to, to listen to all voices with fairness and humility, and to live up to our promises with positive accountability. So our journey to zero harm. So when we look at our safety history in Anglo-American Platinum from 2003 to date, we've seen a 93% reduction in our total recordable test frequency rate. Crucially, we've also seen a sharp reduction in our fatalities over the years. And I'd like to unpack some of the elements that have fed into this reduction, as well as what we're doing to ensure that we embed and entrench zero harm across our operations. There are three key success factors that have delivered the safety record and the improvements that we've seen in our business. Firstly, we've sought to embed our values in the way that we operate. This speaks not only to the value of safety, but ensuring that we drive innovation across our operations that can take people away from harm's way. Secondly, we've embedded operational risk management within our routines, ensuring that we're focusing on and tracking our leading indicators and I'll touch on those a little bit later. Thirdly, we're creating a safe working environment for all of our employees, our own employees and those of our business partners by ensuring a strict and non-negotiable compliance to technical standards. This is done by ensuring that our technical standards are of the highest order and meaningfully um, adopted. Our next is leadership routines. These practices, this is where we've seen a radical shift with an increased focus of leadership time and field, and ensuring that our leaders live and breathe the values and the commitments that we've made. And last but not least, 
our supervisory development, where we continue to focus on investing in the development of our supervisors across the business. All of this has been part of our desire and our drive to achieving zero harm. So we move on to how we continue to drive this and how we make the next step change in the performance of our business. I'd like to just underpin that our core principles is to ensure safe and stable operations. At the onset, I'd like to state that we've embedded zero harm, we've embedded zero harm strategy into our collaboration with many of the participants in the room today, representing organized labor, uh, the Department of Minerals, the Department of Labor, and all our other business partners to ensure that we do this in a collaborative and a collective way. In executing our strategy, our focus is also on working, our focus remains on all injuries, not just recordable injuries, as we will use our leading indicators to underpin the challenges and the changes that are required. So going forward, five key pillars of what that looks like. First of all, caring and connecting with our people. This is linked to our value of care and respect. Role clarity. This is all about ensuring that safety is not just the responsibility of safety officers, but the responsibility of everyone. It's about empowering our frontline team and their management to stop unsafe work and creating a psychologically safe environment. The back to basics approach is really about ensuring that we achieve our ambition of being brilliant at the basics, ensuring that we take care of the fundamentals of mining and processing of which safety is at the heart. No repeats speaks to ensuring that when incidents do happen, we do share them across our operations and ensure that the learnings are embedded across the business in their entirety. We also embark upon incident recalls where we look back at past incidents as refreshers and cross-check our existing systems and controls to ensure that they're fit for purpose for our current operating environment. And in heart environmental behavior is all about understanding why people do what they do, what it makes somebody to decide to work unsafely. We want to enhance our understanding of these behaviors, address the root cause, and ultimately achieve a behavioral change that will embed zero harm in everything that we do. Okay. So looking at some of the indicators, one of the things that we believe that is really important is to ensure that we put energy into our safety system. Now, what do I mean by that? I'm talking about energy of our leadership teams to be in the field and to be embedding a culture of safety within their teams. We see this manifesting itself in the leading indicators, such as high potential hazards and visible fault leadership engagement. You'll see that we've seen a significant increase in high potential hazards identification over the last four years across our operations. This is as a result of an intentional strategy of both our management and supervisor and supervisory teams to go out into the field and find high potential incidents and not only find them, but fix them and ensure that they're sustainable so they do not happen again. Leading on for that, from that, we've seen an almost 700% increase in our workplace stoppages over the last four years. We have been on a bit of a journey on this. Firstly, it was to ensure that substandard and dangerous workplaces would be stopped, which would often have been done in the past by safety officers. But now we've moved to the point where we're asking our frontline teams to initiate that stop for the work. This ensures that we have sufficient coverage when work is taking place and means that we're creating a psychologically safe environment for our, for our teams to initiate stops when necessary. We see this graph on the bottom left-hand corner where you can see that our supervisors are catching up on our safety officers in implementing stops. And we've got to continue to drive this so that everyone in our business prevents and stops unsafe work. Interestingly, <clears throat> you'll also see a pickup in stoppages by our technical teams, which happens when the technical standards are not being adhered to. Once again, all of this is in line with our strategy and is a manifestation of what we're looking at to embed across the business. VFLs, is this, VFLs in a similar nature are monitored and tracked. And as you can see so far, that we've been compliant in all of our targets across our operations. Our focus is now improving the quality and the coverage of our VFLs across the organization. As we move on to one of the, the focus areas and the milestones which we discussed yesterday, falls of ground. The work that I've outlined so far is beginning to bear fruit. And I thought I'd share with you how we're seeing a reduction in fall of grounds, which has been an agency around a number of the fatalities that we had earlier in the presentation. 
our work is focused on addressing the root causes of these falls of grounds and implementing several measures to address this. One such measure is blast on mesh, which amongst other measures has yielded an almost 76% reduction in fall of ground events over the last 13 years. We've been working extensively with our mining partners through the Mineral Council and the CEO Zero Harm Forum to both share the learnings from our own events and embed lessons that we've seen from other events. This is an example once again that shows that the level of rigor that we have, that when we apply to our quest, shows zero harm is indeed truly possible and it's not just an aspiration. With recognizing that zero harm is multifaceted, we realize that zero harm as an organization extends into wellness and well-being. We have a number of initiatives and programs that we run to ensure that our employees are best equipped to take care of their wellness. In referencing just a few of these today, Firstly, on HIV, which was discussed yesterday, we've made significant strides in the last few years to ensuring that our employees know their status and those that are positive, those that are HIV positive, are on the relevant antiretroviral therapy, and this will ultimately achieve the viral suppression. To this respect, we've seen a reduction in, the H in new HIV cases recorded in the last few years. And we've also managed to exceed our targets in two of the three pillars. On tuberculosis, we've made significant progress to go more than three years without a TB-related death in our business. An important aspect of wellness is also mental health, and we've endeavoured to ensure that our employees have the necessary support systems in place, and this is done through our employee assistance programme, where there is ongoing take-up, as you can see in the bottom right-hand graph. We think this is incredibly important as we continue to navigate the change that we've implemented in our business and will continue to go through as we look to the demerger of Anglo, from Anglo-American. So finally, as we move on to health and wellness, building on what I mentioned on the previous slide, true zero harm is about creating an inclusive environment, an inclusive organisation where everybody can bring their full self to work that supports diversity, that supports inclusion, it supports physical safety, psychological safety and wellness. And we're committed to delivering zero, a zero harm environment for all of our employees at our operations. This is leader led and we recognize that. Our leaders are committed to this and will endeavor to build, a culture, to build this culture in the organization. It's about extinguishing gender-based violence. And I'd like to reflect on this point very briefly. As a company, we took the decisive action by taking a stand against gender-based violence and all forms of violence to create a physically and psychologically safe work environment to allow every single employee, be they our own or contractors, to bring their full potential to work without any fear of being violated. We've developed, clear, we've developed a clear GBV response and prevention strategy in 2021 as part of this journey. And I'm pleased under the leadership of a number of people in this room today have started to bear fruits and it really eradicating the scourge that we have in our country. Our GBV stand is that we are unconditional in creating a respectful, inclusive and safe working environment to ensure that no colleague will be violated or harassed under our watch. We do have the appropriate mechanism in our Living with Dignity Hub, which is an independent institution unique to Anglo-American and provides end-to-end -end victim centric case management approach and socio psycho support for the victims that experience GBV. Further, we're committed to creating a psychologically safe environment for our employees with our focus on employee health with respect to ensuring that our employees recognize the benefits of exercise and healthy eating. All of that said reflects our commitment as an organization, both today and into the future, for us to be unconditional about safety, to be unrelenting in our pursuit to zero harm for all who work for us. And it's really critically important that we cannot do this alone that we need to work in collaboration with many of you in this room today to, to create that environment where we can achieve zero harm. And I look forward to continuing to collaborate with you as we look to achieve that in Anglo-American Platinum and as the wider industry. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for listening to me. I'm happy to take some questions. Thank you very much. Um, are there any questions for the speaker for today? We're only taking two questions. Can I have roving mics, please?
Any questions? I don't see any hands. There's one question, okay, Vijay, and then I see another hand at the back, and that's all that we're taking today. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Craig Miller, for that informative presentation and all the efforts that you are putting towards achieving zero harm at Anglo Platinum, and even your commitment to continue with this post demerger from Anglo American. Well done. Roving mics, please. You know, good morning. My name is Josiah Banda. I'm the chief safety officer in one of Harmony operations. Just one question. On the, in your presentation, you mentioned that the supervisors are doing the, their own stoppages. Um, the thing I just want to understand, how did you get that one right for the supervisors to behave in this way? My experience, 40 years experience in the money in this industry is the supervisors are the ones who normally encourage these employees to take shortcuts. Just if I can just get the strategy that you use to get your supervisor to change their mindset. Yeah, thanks, Josiah, for the question. Um, I think we need to reflect on the fact that this is a journey, uh, and part of the part of the work that we've done has been very intentional um, around uh, introducing um, visible thought leadership uh, activities in the field. Um, and as I said, we've had about a 700% increase in the number of um, VFLs in the in the field, where we've actually got specific targets that are required month on month for 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 teams to achieve. Uh, and that's been a real key driver in terms of the, the the safety stoppages. It's importantly, as I also reflected on the point that safety is not just the responsibility of the safety officers. Safety is the responsibility of everybody who goes through an operations gate um, at, at Anglo Platinum. And so it's really changing that approach, really changing the, the driver around actually VFLs as part of your, your, your monthly KPIs as an operation, as a manager, as a supervisor. And, and what we've really got to now do work on is the quality of those VFLs and the coverage. Because as we know, if you're underground at a conventional operation and you're doing your VFLs at the concentrator in the workshop, that's great. But we also want to understand um, unsafe, unsafe practices uh, underground um, and in some of the, the sort of the, the harder to reach working places. And, and that's what we're working on at the moment. So it is a journey, um, but I do think that focus around VFLs and quality time in the field is fundamentally part of the, the change of approach that we need to make uh, in order to achieve zero harm. Thank you very much for that response. We'll take the second question and then we can move on to the next speaker. Thank you very much, Mr. Miller. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Miller. I just want to ask, you've mentioned that you create a psychological safe working environment for your employees, but how do you collaborate that together with the production pressure and the all other things that are happening at the mine? Yes, yeah, so I think, um, thanks very much for the question, sorry, I can't see you, it's like pretty bright up here, so forgive me if I'm looking in the in the wrong direction to, to you. Um, I think, uh, look, um, I think first of all, uh, it is very clear uh, for, for everyone that works for us that no production of an ounce, no production of a ton of ore, no work activity can take place at the expense of somebody's life and their livelihood. Uh, and that is the really, really the important. I have reiterated that several times. I was, as you can imagine, I was being at a Mandelbrot uh, twice in, in the last week, and um, talking to teams, talking to to to, to colleagues, and um, reinforcing that message. Um, and that's really important. If you have safe and stable operations, you'll get to the production. But it can't be production at any cost, and it cannot be production at the cost of somebody's life or an injury. And that's fundamentally important. But we've got work to do. I'm by no means standing up here today telling you that we're perfect in any stretch, by any stretch of the imagination. I think continuing to, to work with our teams, continuing to elaborate, to engage uh, and to collaborate with our teams, that you can start to build that psychologically safe environment and empowering the teams to take responsibility for their work and to stop unsafe work. And that really is part of what we're doing in the messaging and the communication and the actions that we're taking as a company to create that environment. But it, we've still got a long way to go, considering that we still have fatalities in our company and considering that we still have injuries. Well, thank you very much. Uh, let's give him a big round of applause. Thank you.